Uh, my name is Vonda uh, Eagle Horse. Uh, my maiden name is Vonda Long. I am a fourth generation Wounded Knee Massacre direct descendant from uh, James High Hawk. Uh, my, my Lala is a Spotted Elk, also known as Chief Bigfoot. And uh, my Indian name is uh, Tokahe Amaniwi, Hawk's first woman. I uh, was named after a woman named Masa, they call her. She led the people out of Wounded Knee back to a place, you know, there on flats up there. My grandpa on my mother's side at Tiwahe, Chief Hump, non-treaty signer. And uh, so I come from many chiefs. I don't know where to start with, but as far as Ocheti Shakoli, that was just really incredible and amazing. And, uh, you know, that, that, that was an epic time where the great Sioux Nation gathered and the sleeping giant is awake. Now we're on a monumental level, you know, so I, I just, there's, there's so much in my heart that I could say here, but you just had to have been there. You know, we made a blueprint there, you know, and then there were seven council fires that were lit and our allies came together in a good way, you know, and then we were evicted because it was time, you know. And then from there, the animals were spread and thrown across the world. So let them continue the light in the hearts of true men and let our name stay on the right side of history. Definitely. Now, I didn't go up there to die front lines. You know, there's rules in combat. Like I said, I'm a Wounded Knee Massacre direct descendant. And when we went up there that time, we went up there to go pray with the water because, you know, there. This is a prophecy from Sitting Bull, you know, and, and, and it, it's that time, you know, and the seventh generation come to be, and, and, it, and it's now, still. So this is just, there's so much words, this is so epic what happened up there, so holy. It, it just, it, it's, like I said, there's rules in combat, so we didn't go up there to die. I didn't go up there to die for that water, I went up there to live with it, you know. Like I said, I'm a... I'm a wounded demasker descendant. I'm not a survivor, I survived. So I went up there and I asked, you know, hey, the United States government, you need to look at these atrocities there at Wounded Knee. You need to apologize for that Wounded Knee massacre. You know. So we took a we took a stand there on non-treaty land. They call it Chetty Shakoe. I watched that place be born. I was uh, given uh, private vehicle by Chairman Frazier, Washte. He took my family in there. There were seven teepees that were set up there. I took that fifth realm. There was nothing there. And then uh, pretty soon, you know, the full bear family came in there and I was the only woman. There was Amos Cook, my, my two sons and his son. We sat there that night. And people were over on Sacred Stone, but we sat there that night in the seven teepees and we prayed. And it was pretty, pretty interesting because we knew the guns were against us. We heard the drones fly over the teepee that night. But we sat there and we prayed. We smudged. We knew our grandfathers had us that time, and they still do. After that time come about, Oglala came in. I had a whip carrier because I knew down there in Treaty Land that it wasn't going to be an IRA structure or BIA or state that was going to have any type of government in the seven council fires. They had to go back to our our structure of uh, whip carriers and societies, the Wolakota. So I came in there with a whip carrier to, to help in a good way there. And security I had was Eagle Boy Co., you know, American Indian Movement. Took the North Gate there, smudged everybody come in. Watched and then Oglala came in. They came in, I remember 2 o'clock in the morning when Oglala came in, they came in a couple buses and stuff. We watched it be born, and the next year you know you could hear them say, oh, they're loading their, they're loading pipe bombs, they were saying. It wasn't that, we were loading our chanupas, they're, we were loading our pipes. And they were saying, they're loading pipe bombs. So that's when I knew that, you know, they, th they knew we were a threat and stuff. And so we were there, watched it play be born, it, just, it was epic, holy, still is. And then after a while, you know, things just started to become really crazy. They were, like I said, you know, there's rules of combat. You know, and women were up there and children were up there and they were offering water, tobacco in a good way, you know. All of a sudden, these, the, the guns would come up against them, you know. It's almost like, you know, they, it was just like, you know, kind of, it was really sad, that opposition, you know. 
and it, it was just it's sometimes you know you just kind of just you just can't allow anybody to push you around you know you just can't allow anybody just to put you in the corner and and you know these you know we've come you know a lot of us here as Native Americans you know we were born with the odds against us you know we were born in a lot of poverty and a lot of you know hardships but so so it calloused us and made us ready for that you know and so when we watched our hidden agenda come about you know we watched it unfold in front of us but it was predictable you know because we already uh, we already took out their captain Custer you know or whatever general Custer whatever we already took him out captured the United States flag so we got it Pierce South Dakota so we knew this was going to be all right that time and sure enough you know but it was sad you know because on November 20th I I'm honored to say that you know I was a part of that, but sometimes it hurts me. It makes me wonder if, 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 if we initiated some of these people, like you know Susie, her, her I got shot out that night, you know, and Eagle Boy's dad, you know, Johnny Cole brought some people in from Pittsburgh and New York, and her arm got shot, you know. They were trying to say that when we backed our semi up back there, or Mike Marcus's semi, when we backed up that time, there were three of us in there. We got shot with rubber bullets. We got shot with. I mean, they should, they tear gassed us, everything inside of there, they use a sound cannon, but we kept pulling that first time, that chain snapped. That second time we backed up, Red Warrior came in like that, you know, and it went. And here they filled up like that, the whole thing filled up, with all of that tear gas, all of that, that, that C3, all that, I don't know, tear gas, C3 canister, I don't know, all these, and we couldn't breathe. You know, we were just like, well, we'll give it to our grandfathers, you know. I sat there in my mind and I just sat there and thought about the people who pass away in fires and the children who suffer, you know. It's kind of like, wow. It was pretty sad to be in that and you could just see all this flashing going on. You could see everybody going. You could see the water coming, holding people, holding tarps up, you know. So it was like tanks against tarps. They had million dollars. These guys had, you know, tarps, you know. That was a hoichala, they call that. That's a faith. You know, a prayer, you know, and that's what it was, tanks against tarps, you know, and, and the perseverance of a, of a truth came to light that night, you know. So when we pull that out like that, you know, and, and it, here we go, you know, <laughs> you know I'm going to pull that, that fifth little plate. We are pulling out like that, and then all of a sudden, just, in there, ba 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 I mean, I'm Martin County, all of my I guess Tiger Swine was there, or excuse me, Tiger Swan was there too. Like I said, rules in combat, you know, and I just thought, well, if I have to do this here, you know, I take that, that, that chance, this will be my sacrifice here, you know, I am a wounded knee massacre descendant, and this is not in vain, and these ones that are standing up here praying for, you know, for the water, you know, for the one's generation to come, should not have to go against this opposition, you know, there's rules in combat, you know, there's no reason to be pouring chemicals on everybody there on treaty land, you know, there's no reason for that. Everybody there on Treaty Land was front lines because every morning when we'd get up, they'd spray stuff on us. You know, little ones praying, you know. You know, just because it was an epic moment for all of us to be there. Anyway, that night when that happened, I we went up after that and uh, I prayed and I, I, I pulled myself up and I started to smudge. I'm a sun dancer. You know, I. I I'm honored to say that I have a strong faith in, in many. You know, I read the Quran back to front, you know. I, 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 I have a faith in anything that is good that goes to that side. So that night, you know, I thought they was going to really wipe us out. You know, just think if that was real lead, it would have melted right through us and got us easy. I remember sitting, I was like, sitting in a driver's seat. I was raising those RPMs to 22. Looked over at Eagle Boy. I saw all right there on the side like that. And I was like, dur, dur. they shot those two bean bags right there because his face was lifted out. They shot boo boo like that. And then I looked out on my side like that, and I was raising them like that. And then Mark Mike was back here, hurrying up and getting, you know, getting it going in here. They started to shoot at him and everything, but then the red wire, different ones were up to throwing those canisters back like that, picking up him and stuff. Different ones were ready. They were ready because you know they've been doing this for months. They were getting it on, so they were ready. You know, it wasn't by that time November. It was cold, you know, but stay warm. They were saying, you know, and that lateral violence that the ones had. That's gone. You know, we're all team as one. You know. But when that was going on, we picked up those prayer. He says, look, look, here's our prayer ties. You know, I said, 
There's a prayer ties and threw them out like that. Media jumped down, cameras, everything grabbed it. I had a, a press representative named Amber Bracken in that BuzzFeed. You know, I think that she just finished her article on me on Wounded Knee or something like that. You know, because that was a coward act that happened up there again. You know, that ha coward act happened in, up there in Wounded Knee again. You know, they they massacred people, so the American Indian Movement went up there, and that coward act happened again. You know. The, the, the government came in and started shooting, you know, trying to do that, you know, Peltier was taken out, you know, and you know, like that, you know, that atrocity happened again. And because they never apologized for that, then look at what happened here in Standing Rock. Again, same thing, you know. This history just continued to just repeat itself, and so that's why I said, let's just ask for an apology already, you know, resend this 22 Medal of Honor, you know, I'd like to see that resend. That's a coward act. Who'd want to carry that type of stain on you in the name of vain, you know? That's not an honor. I mean, look at it. That's not even an honor, but regardless of all of that, you know, with the pipeline, I never found a pipeline in my life, you know? I, like I said, I'm a sun dancer, white job of the talk still. I, uh, I have a great day. I knew that our grandfathers were as good and holy to handle that. So when technology fails, there's no limits to what our grandfathers can do when they take over. That's the elements of this world, you know? So I knew there was something there, you know, that was going to be all right. But, but it's about getting our word out. And now you're here to help us. And we're going we're gonna to still keep trying, you know? But on November 20th, that, that test is my faith. Because when they put the guns against us and shot that whole thing up, I thought that was the end of us right there. I mean, I really thought that was the end of us. I lit that sage and I lit that cedar and I just prayed. I prayed with everything that I am because, you know, I, I got a faith there. Even in Christ, because in Salt Lake City a couple of years back, I was stabbed across my face. My arm right here, you know, two Mexican gang members. And, and I just have a faith there. I just have a great faith there in what is good and holy. So we prayed like that, and I just kept smudging. I kept praying like that, and here, uh, <clears throat> that smudge went through, and it broke up all of that, all that tear gas, everything that got caught in the cab. And then uh, <laughs> after that, we got that son of a bitch out of there. We pulled that armored vehicle off of that bridge November 20th. We pulled that piece of shit off the side. We went back to go get the second one, but then that fifth wheel plate was slipping. So, oh shoot. So we went back up into uh, Kichita up there with Junior American Horse. We jumped inside the Silver Shark with the Silver Van. Then we got up. Some guy came in, and I guess he left his gill suit up there. I remember his name was Gary. He was a Diné. Arizona came up, military guy, you know, and they were out there fighting with Gap and all of them. So next we went and we got inside of there, and we got up there where they had last time when they lost that North Gate up there in February before we got evicted that time. We went up inside of there, and they were, we had that, we had, then we had that crossbow and stuff like that that time, you know. They were all drones up there, we looked. The saddest thing to see because me and you boy talk about it. He is my companion. Say, did you ever feel bad that we initiated that? You know, because when we looked up there, when we went to go get that guy, their guy Apple was chasing him, but they had to split up. That guy jumped on top of the tree like this, and hung up there, and they went through. It. And then we got him, got him back down. He's really dehydrated, all wet. I got knocked out for two hours at that. See, when there was a percussion or C3 canister, that gas got inside of me. And I was, for two hours when we were going around up inside of there, and they were getting everybody, I was you know, in there sick. You know, I came out pretty, at the end of this whole thing, I came out pretty small, stomach bleeding, everything like that. I came out real bad cough, my hair can't grow, you know, and all that, you know, a little bit of trauma, a lot of, you know, on top of trauma, you know, so, you know, just, just, just hoping that the truth will get known and they just, you know, stop all of these, 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 these ridiculous, you know, real, the way they're doing is just sad, you know, what they're doing to us, they need to stop now because now the world is watching it. And it's really embarrassing, you know, and, and, you know, what is good and holy will always win, the truth will always take its presence. And no matter what this United States government, they are never going to get away with it because they are false. And there's a time and a moment for everything, and you know, these massacres, even Sand Creek, all these different massacres, was a time. Because our people and our grandfathers, they didn't die in vain. Nobody's good. 
You know, there's a lot of things I could tell you in the time when I went up there from the moment when I get in the teepees and watched everybody be born, watched every place come to be, watched these new people come about, everything, watch these new entities come in and become what they are, watch the herd over there, watch who everybody become. Everything there in Ocheti, it was really amazing to be a part of that. One of the reasons I really was really safe in being there is because my brother is Steve Vance, the Lakota Preservation Officer for Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe, who sits side by side for Mr. Harold Frazier and I fight Dapple in there in court. That's my brother Steve Vance, my big brother. So there's a, like I said, there's many dogs in that race, you know, the family's been protecting safe for fights. I knew exactly what was going on. I went in there as wounded knee. I had the inside connection here. I had the inside way with Frazier. You know, but I just kind of been on a DL here because I don't know who's dry snitches in our circle. You know what I mean? You got to be careful of that kind. You know, so I, I I'm here on my own time here. I even got arrested up there for you know like that. You know, from exercising my my freedom of religion, you know, my First Amendment, you know, sage, pejuta, water, air, you know, that way and stuff. Was like, my word, you know, it was just amazing all that that happened. I don't even know what else I could hear about that place being born, about being there on the bat, the 20th, working with the Akichita, being up in there and watching. Used to Sundance with uh, Deb White, the one who born Red Warrior, and then Aloha, and like that. So there's a lot of things, good things still going to happen there. And I, I really don't, when I was there, uh, American Indian Movement Chapter uh, Seventh Generation was born, and that was when uh, Marcella Gilbert here, much yes, you, know, you need to come and voice for Cheyenne River, you know, you're part of that. I used to have AIM chapter up there in Salt Lake City, where I'm from, uh, Native American Brotherhood. We got a sweat lodge there, fought a bunch of, you know, even the LBS Church and stuff. We got, but we got it, you know, AIM chapter that way. And in my, in fact, then my husband, my kids, his father, you know, he ran with the staff on the longest walk. Filmed the uh, wounded knee siege down there. Filmed uh, him and uh, you know, he had a stepfather from Greengrass there, you know, and they uh, uh, Gilbert Frazier. Them ones they all they all filmed these things, you know, longest walk, trail broken treaties, all those things, you know. So we got history there, you know. Roberta uh, Brave, Regina Brave, that's my aunt. She was down there and wounded knee, and she was the last one coming out of Ocheti. So. We must all have that same DNA, you know, that same heart that says, oh, you know, why not? You know, let's just do it, you know. So I don't even know what else to say here. Um, geez, there's so much I could tell you about that. I just know that we're writing a blueprint, you know, and, and we're not challenging nothing. And, and I just hope that there is no next time. And I just, you know, it was an honor to live in that, in that uh, prayer uh, warrior camp. Because, you know, I come from Crazy Horse, like I said, like Chief Hump. His little sister is a white good woman, gave birth to Crazy Horse. You know, so that's my T.Y. hand, that's my DNA, that's my blood. Anyway, so just, you know, that you, it's okay to pray and nobody went there and said, I'm here to die, like a suicide mind. You know, people went there to, to really, because you didn't know if you were going on the other side, you have to be ready ready for that and pray that way and be ready but nobody knew that that was going to happen up there that they were going to do that to us at any time at any night at any night you know i've got my grandkids i've got grandkids my my grandson came in there at two months old came out of there you know, it's five seven six months i think old they look up to the sky and they call uh when they see helicopters they'll be playing oh those are dapples they say they call helicopters dapples. They learn how to talk around there. The little ones, that teepee that I said that we came in, they grew up looking at those poles, you know. I guess when they came back in, they came home and stuff, wherever they saw four walls. It scared them because all they saw were teepees growing up like this into the babies. So it was kind of different for them, culture shock. But anyway, so it was good to live there. As I said, I didn't come here to die. I came here to live, you know, with this water and live with my grandkids and my children and stuff. But I had that opportunity. As far as everything else and that, I just want that all. I just hope when people really see what they did is really embarrassing on their side because they embarrass themselves again. There's rules in combat. Why'd you put guns against women in dresses and babies in pampers, you know? That's really coward. That's so coward. That's just like the Wounded Me Massacre. That's so coward, you know? Taking little babies and cradle boards and bashing them against those tree trunks, you know, shooting women in the back, you know. 
stuff like that. That's a coward act. I mean, you get decorated 22 medals of honor for that. You know, that's coward. That's the history of this nation. I'm not from here. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm from at the root, the grassroots. They could go ahead and just say it, but we know who we are. They know what's going on, and they know what time it is. And we are here in this holy moment. You know, if I die today or you know, tonight, just know they need to apologize for that wounded massacre in my grandfather, James Highhawk, and they need to change that name Bigfoot. They need to change it back to Spotted Out because they gave him that name Bigfoot by putting big shoes on him, made fun of him. There, your chief Bigfoot put some government shoes on the middle for them. He's a chief. His real name is Spotted Out. It's his real name. And then my grandpa Chief Hump told him, "Don't go, don't go down there. You know, it's a trick." Red Cloud, you know, no, come. But he, you know, he's a band chief, James Highox. So they went down there with Spotted Out, and they all went. Grandpa Chief Hump, you know, said, "Don't go." But then he sent some of his warrior scouts with him. They went down there, and the massacre happened. Then all of a sudden they went, the little ones ran back to Cheyenne River, the little tiny ones. They ran, run, till you can't hear the guns no more, you know. And that was on my, my husband passed away, rest in peace. His, you know, his, uh, his grandma's one who led him back, walks for one who named after. Anyway, when that happened over there, you know, it was really sad, but you know, we're here now and it's a hard thing to talk about, but, but that was the reason why I was in Standing Rock. That, and as far as the pipeline, like I said, my brother Steve said this all ends up in court, sis. They always do, you know. But just be careful, you know. There's no violation of peace treaties. Make sure if there's anything holy there, you know, that could be deemed, deemed a sacred site, you know, this and that. So, you know, like I said, it was, it was all meant to be. You know, I don't come out. I don't talk much. You know, I just kind of. I kind of just watch everybody write the blueprint. My name is Walks First Woman, but actually I'm from last. <laughs> and that, so with that, I don't know what you'd like to say, but I hope I cleared it all up for you and you can edit it. <laughs> We're not trying to edit anything, actually. Really? We, yeah, we want we want the people to tell their stories the way they want Jeez, to tell them. The last you know? movie I was in was Hidalgo. I was a ghost dancer featured at the beginning, and I remember we kept having to edit over and over and over. <laughs> Um, Eagle Mortensen, that was a good movie, but yeah, it was a good time that time too. But yeah, we're, yeah, I don't know how many other things in combat, you know, like I said, when the guns were against us, Bismarck Press hit my you know, Eagle Boyd and they had the guns up against us in that time. That's what really got me mad because I was trying to say, hey, these guys took pictures. You may not respect that they took pictures down here of our ceremony. You may not respect that at all. The user took an oath to protect, the gut, protect all of us. But there's children inside of here. They took pictures of children. I said, what if they hashtag these to hate sites, porn sites? You don't know what they could capable of doing. You should protect us this way. I went up and I said that to Morton County up there like that when they, whatever, they, them guys came. They all look alike to me, so I can't say who's who, you know. And so then, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll get them out. So we brought her out, brought the Bismarck press out like that. Yeah, here they, they just let them go. Later on, I said, well, I put the back with it. I said, whatever it holy is, it's gonna, the truth's going to come out here. Sure enough, they found out they were fraudulent. Now they're all, no, these guys weren't, they were, really weren't Bismarck Press because I remember uh, Dave Arshamble's dad came in to go talk to Eagle Boy at that time because he said, hey, you know, we know they hit you, you know, and stuff like that. But no, it wasn't. So I said, hold them accountable, hold them liable, kill damages, you know, something. You know, our, our occupation isn't in vain here, you know, and even me, and as American women, when I said, I'm squatting here, I'm squatting here, 30 days, I'm squatting here, you gotta know your rights while we still have them, you know, so, with that, so much happened, and I'm really honored to say that, thankful for Dennis Banks. Alright, so, um, my last question that I want to ask, I want to know what your opinion is on, on the next steps that should be taken, and, um, how you see yourself acting through the next steps and being an activist and whatnot. Well, actually, we already took the steps and we already got organized over there on West End for the KXL fight. We've already got the headsmen going over there, you know, people who originally had the KXL and the Moxons on the ground and all of them and Bud Lonegal and, you know, uh, Manny Ironhawk and Eagle Boy and Steve Vance. These guys are all headsmen out there, out there already ready to, in case if something happens. So. As far as cake sale, that's a little bit too close to home there. You know, now you're mess now you're stepping on the wounded massacre descendants feet, you know. 
We're not doing nothing but just sitting there, but you're really going to make some noise for yourself there because we're just minding our own business out there. Now they're trying to bring man camps through there, you know, and we're right there on the highway, you know, bikers come through there and they say we can't mask up, you know, or this and that. Well, how come the bikers come through there and they mask up? They don't want to eat grasshoppers. Well, maybe we don't want to either. No. <laughs> you know, that just, just, you know, we, they, we know that, 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 uh, that we're a threat and they know we are you know it, it, we know that that our allies are with us on this there's many nations across the world who are with us so you know I'm sure if need be there will be a unity somewhere again in time and I really believe that uh, as far as these camps and everything go like that I hope everybody stays in a good way and exercise control within their own circle and here on Shine River Sioux Tribe I'm really honored that this camp is here. I, I haven't gone over to come and pay service or anything here because I, I, I came home and just trying to get my life back together, you know, and whatnot. And I just hope that, you know, it's all, I hope it's all worth it, you know, because some of these people really have to suffer being persecuted even from their own people for still being in a camp. They're not understood, you know. They should, they're guests and they should be treated accordingly, you know. And by the same token, you know, we're going to have, if, if heaven forbid this cake, see how the fight comes through here. Let's hope it don't. Let's hope that that stops right there. Let's hope it all stops. There's no more for that. You know, our Mother Earth can't take no more. You know, it's coming off balance. They're taking all of the minerals and the resources out. It's coming off balance, you know. It's going to purify itself, you know, like it does. I just hope nothing like that happens, and, and I hope these camps, you know, I hope they, they persevere through all of it because, you know, we just don't know what's going to happen again. Like in Standing Rock, we just didn't know what was going to happen. We wrote a blueprint, but at least now we know what we can take from that and how to do it now, you know. And, and these other ones fighting the pipeline across the world, I, 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 I really, really give them a shout out and praise for the things that they do, you know, and, and these, these riots and these things going around across the world. You know, I really hope it's all worth it, you know, because we had guns against us up there and nobody was even trying to riot. We were just praying, you know, in a good way because it was time for us to gather as nations and pray for this seventh generation. Here they put the guns against us on treaty land. And I hope these camps, you know, they need to be careful sometimes here on, on the reservation because, you know, they, you know, you know, they need to stay peaceful. You know, nobody needs to come and try to, you know, hype them up or anything because you know, that lateral violence isn't good. And sometimes, you know, you, you really get into it. You, know, you call in the, you know, you call in the Jakes or you call in the man or whatever, and the chunk saws. You know, the, the cops. And then they'll turn around and they'll say, that, you know, oh, you're in violation of the peace treaty. You know, and, well, they're trying to cut our grant money anyway, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm one who says free our people, you know. I'm one, because like I said, I'm independent anyway, you know. I don't get commands or nothing, you know. Maybe I should swallow my pride. But I'm just saying, you know, I hope these camps, you know, I hope they continue to persevere wherever they're going to be. They stay in a good way, and I hope that they're not sprayed on with chemicals, and I hope the guns don't come against them, and I hope that they can still stay and heal themselves in these camps and pray together and stay together and keep those ambers burning, you know. And no one needs to come against them and this opposition that we all pray about, you know, and pray against, you know, in these camps, you know. I think it's good. Nobody understands what they're doing here. People think they're just trying to fight pipelines that, oh, we're healing together, you know. I may now never been able to visit, but I, I love you from a distance. I'm home, you know. As far as other people, if that KXL camp comes up about, and as far as an activist, you're stepping on my front door. Everyone has a right to protect themselves. A little too close to home. And there is going to be no great calling to this case. So people need to come over here and act accordingly as guests. But we need to treat our guests accordingly also. But these agitators and infiltrators, they, 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 they're, they're messing with chiefs. That's where the chiefs well up over there. That's, uh, all these non-treaty signers, you know, touch the crowd. Chief Hump, Little Crow, you know, many, many from Cherry Creek, South Dakota. You know, so much history there, you know, but they're quiet, mind your own business, just live by, you know. The threat, if any of that comes through there, it's going to not be good, you know, so let's pray those things don't happen, you know, because, like I said, there's a lot of oppression, and you know, when that lateral violence comes about, they might fight against each other, but whenever there's an enemy, everybody stops. Who are you? You know, like that. Everybody's still on the same team. And so sad that had to happen over there in Standing Rock. But as far as uh, 
it did help us all come together. Let's stay that way. And I hope that we continue. And, and as far as me as an activist, I, I, I don't I don't have a title. I just, uh, I'm just a common woman. I'm just, I don't know one. I'm just living, trying to live. I don't even know what an activist is, you know. Does that mean rave your fry bread in the air? And no. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to be on the same. I'm going to be on the same team of my grandfathers and their grandchildren, who we are right now. Let our names stay on the right side of history. For our grandfathers and ancestors did not live nor die in vain. Me myself today, I don't say these things for tomorrow. It's for our future. We need each other. Thank you.